on the rift. And man, let's see what we get here because last time around we did see all five members of both teams going in to get vision and it looked like there's going to be a potential brawl, but I don't think that's going to happen again. We look like we're having a more standard um, strategy right out the gates. Mm -hmm. Some sort of five point here. Um, a four point, I guess you could say, on the side of Mad City. But I think all is safe. They just need to be um, prepared for any vision placement. See, teleport on Zoe. That's interesting. I think it's because Zillion has that undying. Zoe will not take Ignite. But Ignite on Zoe is really crazy in the uh, early game. But so here, the thing is with that is Zoe does have unsealed spellbook. So oh. um, if I am this Good Zoe luck. and this is coming from a lower tier player, uh, I would be looking to make um, some plays early, get some farm out, and then maybe get that early back um, with a TP and then potentially resetting my... Yeah, I guess I don't... TP it's been a while since I used unsealed spellbook. I know. I, I've never actually ran it like comfortably. I've only like messed around on it maybe like once or twice. But I think the idea is... You use that TP uh, to get yourself back in lane, healthy, safe tempo, and then you swap it over to uh, kill spell, ig ignite, or uh, situational exhaust barrier, what, what have you. Uh, and then you know that you can get a TP back for late game if you ever need a 1-3-1 one, one or something yep. like that. Yep. But eyes on the Zoe to look make picks. This is all about making picks, I think, here. These two teams just duked it out hard game one, and now they're uh, taking a more precise approach with the the pick comps that they've gathered. Yeah, and um, something I'd like to point out is we do, this is Mark Boots on the Zoe here, and um, the other weeks that we saw him play during qualifiers, he really was sticking to this assassin um, play style with his picks. We saw him on uh, Zed, if I'm not mistaken. We saw him on LeBlanc. Yep. Um, so now we've seen him on mages twice. Uh, this this man really has a diverse champion pool. That's a great point. Try to keep an eye on Mark Boots here, who's showing us his diversity in champion pool. I'm glad you mentioned that because a very great, like skilled Zed LeBlanc player, if they're also nasty on the Zoe and the Victor, that, that's pretty dangerous to deal with in, in champ select. So... What the hell was that that he just used? I'm assuming it's an item that he had picked up off of a minion, but I don't actually know oh, what okay, item that I was. Oh, okay, I got you. That, Zoe must have gotten that from a minion, and it's the new... Wait a second, this looks like a 2v1, I think. Gragas is going to oh, go down here. the double uh, a TP? TP and a red TP to answer, and a blue member here, so it's going to oh, be a 3v3. Oh, man, we're already starting it out. And Cho'Goth will get first blood on the Gragas, but it's going to be answered here. The Kindred will drop by the Zoe, <laughs> and it's blue team again. Winning it out here with the Zoe TP and the counter gank. Wow, we're already getting the double TP play at three minutes in. Let's take a look at that again. Wow, yeah. I, dude, the it's... way these players are playing this game so aggressively in the early game, so team oriented is amazing. I love to see that. Yeah, so Cho'Goth, or I'm sorry, Gragas was dead to rights, but he was able to belly slam and Q on his way out, setting up his team for a winnable 2v2, because if the champion that Hecarim engages on is on cooldowns, they're just going to die. So Hecarim and Zoe there, really strong in the early game. And if they were to try to extend that 2v2, they'd probably lose due to the fact that Zoe can pick up sums if they're flashing away, if Cho'Goth flashes away or whatever. Um, Zoe can follow, take his flash, flash bubble him, things like that, so... Yeah, really well played by Mad City. They are on the ball. They really, really are. Um, you know, watching gameplay like this, um, I do watch the pro leagues, not as much as you. I don't really... I, I watch it on a different level at which I watch this. When I watch this, I'm watching it as the, the caster. I'm inspecting every play. I am trying to grasp further out of my standard knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, you're not just a spectator. But here. yes, I'm not just a spectator. When I watch the pro leagues, I, you know, I'm guilty of not really. I don't analyze the gameplay as at which I do now, and it's awesome to see this here happening, the way it does, especially with these amateur teams and collegiate teams. Um, yeah. Just displaying amazing skill. Definitely, it's so beautiful to watch two teams going at it, and you know, McMaster's is not out. I mean, man, this is still a series. Oh, man. And if, oh, oh, and the flash play from Django there. Let's take another look at that. Hey, I really yo. thought he, that that was going to – the end of the play was there. I, I was thinking to myself, damn, if he had level 6, he was picking up the kill. And what do you know? He picks up the kill anyway with a flash silence. 
Yep, so one thing to know is just that Gragas doesn't have flash here. Uh, and I also think Django silenced flash. So it like started the animation flash on top of him so that it's impossible to dodge. Gragas, no flash. He also procced phase rush that came from his Omni Stone mm -hmm. in the top lane, by the way, uh, which helped him get that kill and landed a Q. So Django doing a lot of small things correctly here. Ooh, Zillion with a beautiful dodge on the bubble. He maybe would have died at that land. I'm yeah, sure. it's hard to say. You know, like in that scenario, he has to walk right into her. Um, but yeah, if that's if that bubble hit, he probably would die. He would have at least gone very, very low. And if Zoe had ignite, he would be dead. But I understand the Zoe TP. I like the spellbook. I think it's very interesting. We got spellbooks in this game. We got Omni Stones in this game. Here's his lethal tempo, right? Let's see if he can proc this. He's gonna, if he hits the Gragas, he will. Oh, we see the both junglers fighting it out. This is on red team's side of the map, but there's no Zillion res quite yet. They all trade junglers. So Zoe kills Kindred, Zillion kills Hecarim. Now it's a face off here in between the red turret. Zoe with one more on the way out. Mark I Boots like looking it. pretty comfortable on the on the Zoe here, making pretty aggressive plays, um, putting himself in scenarios that are not necessarily uh, dream scenarios, but just playing it like he knows how to play it, I guess is where I'm getting at. Yep. And it's blow for blow again. Try. I think the scoreboard was like eerily similar last game at this time. It really, three really three, was. It was like almost that. the exact <laughs> same uh, start as last game. It's three to three. TP uh, coming well, in for some early. Yeah, finishes. yeah, exactly. Like... That's what I love to see. Come on, guys, bring that, bring that shit to my solo keyboard. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> And I think try I, I failed to actually track junglers in their early pathing here. I think it's really important. We see that Hecarim has come out to a camp lead here uh, over the Kindred. Both are power farming junglers. Kindred, I think, needs uh, some levels and some stats before she could farm as quickly as Hecarim. So him getting ahead early here. So patiently waiting for that ward to go down so he can make his way into this tri brush. Um, will this result in a play? Oh, he gets spotted out by the... Uh, Ash Arrow, I don't know what that ability is called, uh, but definitely countered, countered that play there. Do you Hi know what it's called? Sighthawk? No, it's not that. Sighthawk. Recon something? No, that's so bad. Recon um, Parrot. <laughs> Recon Parrot. Recon Parrot. Okay, that's what we're calling it. From now on, you heard it here first. Ash <laughs> spotting out Hecarim with that Recon Parrot there. I wonder if Cho get the Dark Harvest. This is a funny one because he has to get Gragas really low to even get it, but then it doesn't stack on itself unless you and get it. And he does have ulti though, so oh, super interesting. I love that every time we pan the top lane, it's a different lane because Cho has a different a different rune. army. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, um, this is a dive look. It's a three man. There's Kindred Zillion here. They can even res. They don't have to be afraid of death at all. Wow. Which ulti will they use? It's going to be... Okay, Zilli ulti on Django. Hecarim tried to Hecarim. respond, but a beautiful knockup by Cho'Gath will oh. interrupt. The Hecarim E, the Zoe bubble, I think misses, but she could possibly follow up. It's a 2v3. She will go in. There's another undying. It's so hard to kill these champions. All right, all right, Director Tool. Why in the world are you going bot for this very slight trade Will we see some action in the top lane? Oh, what do you know? This is why, because... Uh, who is this right here? Uh... Beret is just doing massive damage with those uh, Jin shots. Yeah, this was the Jin that we saw. Can he saw, cancel like, these backs with his W? This Jin popped off last game. And hey, Jin Ash, is you're going down, baby. Jin's a scaling champion. Like he's yeah. a marksman that really packs a punch. When you look at Jin scaling, the first thing I usually do is look at the tanks on the enemy team, and I do see a Cho'Gath um, as kind of the main oh. tank. Dang. So. Uh, uh, Scenario there is, I mean, when he ate, when sh he got the fourth shot, um, and the devourer came out from Tom, I think maybe they should have walked it down towards that Ash. Could have picked up the kill at that W and potentially gotten away with uh, Gray Skin. Is I think what it's called, right? Possibly Gray Skin. Oh yeah, on, on Tom. Tom. Yeah, could have been a dive, dive angle. Maybe right try. And I think Django is just hail of blazing this 
Zoe down. A really nice Q. He'll flash to follow it up, and that's the shutdown. I wish we could have seen that play from the start because he was hitting her with Hail of Blades. Yeah, of so all what things. do you think here? There's no way he's getting out scot free, but what? They guessed he went try, they guessed wrong. So he wow. scoots through the jungle. I don't think he's quite out yet, but yeah, he, he'll get to the safety of his teammates. And because of the response from Blue Team, Red Team is able to actually start up Drake as well. Yeah, so with we say numbers. three. Yeah, three members here on Cloud Drake. Um, and I think it's going to be free. They shouldn't be able to also get this crab, too, because Red Team's actually getting everything on the map. A, a dive top, Cho'Gath gets al away alive, they get Drake, and they get crab. So Blue wants to punish the, the greed here because they just took so much. Yeah, but so, you know, at, with that being said, it seems like this is maybe kind of standard for Mad City, uh, giving up what they feel is... Um, I will wait one second while this play happens because... I think yeah, maybe so. a little bit of mispositioning from the red side. Uh, I'm assuming they were that deep because they were looking for the Kindred mark, but I'm not sure that they oh, were in this. Bubba will land. No oh. ulti on the Kindred, and Mark Boots will take them down, as well as the Maokai dropping earlier. The Maokai actually blocked the Jin W that would have killed the Zoe, so saving the Zoe's life there. And the Kindred in Vaytri, I think, was in response to, wait a second, Grogish flash combo, um, tries to get around the barrel, but misses, Ash responded with autos, but so he Mark Boots, too much damage, good night. Oh, and it hits the Drowsy, and this is gonna be another kill. But the Zilly ulti can come through now, here comes the res, Maokai is back, these long fights, it's so hard to take down a red member for good. And they're diving. Blue with a possible dive, here comes the gray skin you were talking about, if he needs oh it, Mark Boots God. with another one, that Maokai dying on respawn now. Alright, are they going back in for another, here comes Kindred. So he could flash out, oh, the bubble would tag the Zilly there. Dodges the all. is she going in? No, she is not. Oh! Zoe styling here. This is what this champion can do when you can't see her and she's in fog of war with all these walls in the jungle. She's extremely dangerous. But here we see that Zillion Rez going down uh, onto himself. He will flash under turret for safety, but blue persistent with the dive. And it's all about giving Mark Boots time on this Zoe. He needs that Q and the R cooldown. If his team can play around that, he's just he's just dinging these members and dropping yeah. them about half the time. Yeah. Uh, so what I was saying before that play took place was uh, we saw a similar pattern for Mad City in game one where they gave up a lot of objective control. But as you can see here, they are still up in gold. They are up in kills, only down one Drake. And we might see the same thing happen this game, giving away objectives and playing for the late game. As we've seen them so far, they've done it lawlessly Yeah. in a few of their games. I think we've seen them kind of play the same way. Uh, in the previous weeks where we thought maybe it wasn't looking good too good for them and they turn the game and take the win as we get into the late game. You know what? I got to right, I gotta just give it to Mad City at this point. I think they've surprised me too many times now, and I just am going to expect this team to come out and just be playing so insanely well. I mean, it's consistency at this point. Yeah. And we see Mark Butes with a really nice Zoe. Oh, and the damage Zilli. already. He's going to force the ulti out. He's probably calling teammates, but... Kindred around the corner. Oh, he doesn't see the Kindred. Wait, he has he has Zoe Mark. This is huge for the Kindred. She will, of course, flash for that one. The Q oh, auto will do it. it. That's a shutdown and a mark for the Kindred. That really spices this game up. That's huge here. Let's see Phase Rush, Cho'Gath. Oh, oh, and the Gragas ER combo, but he's probably tanky enough to get out. He looks to respond, but we'll just push the wave and can take a nice reset if he wants. Action everywhere. We see Common. Are those flying. new skins out yet? Which ones? The the one for Choga. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. I wasn't. I guess I'll give him a pass. But I was gonna tell him step up your skin. <gasps> wow, and he does get it. The tower shot. That's a misplay. Shot, That's a misplay by Django. So Kindred comes and dives. Chogath tanks. As Chogath is tanking last turret, Kindred dropped R, but Chogath was not in the R range. He needed to just walk onto his Kindred to go ahead and soak that turret. He's probably kicking himself for that one. Back and forth. This is like a boxing match. Left left for right, punch for punch, blow for blow here. Yeah, this is exactly like Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> this is more like Ryan Garcia. He's a real boxer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, these dude, these come boxers. On. Those guys, guys are, are real boxers. No, bro. no, stop. <laughs> uh Jake and Logan train. I'll give them that. Like I'm not they're not just YouTube celebrities in that sense. Like they train a box, but they're not Ryan Garcia. If you guys want to watch 
boxing. I, I was just watching his highlights last night. I'm like, man crushing over here. <laughs> if you guys watched him, you would too. A lot of poke going down there in the bot lane um, onto Mad City. Okay, so Drake number two is spawning. That's going to be Infernal. That tells us that Soul will be either Ocean or Mountain, right? It's going to be a very significant Soul in this game. We see Hecarim slotted in the bot lane. We'll, run, we'll team up with the Zoe, the four man. Look at the bot lane, how low they are. That is significant damage here. They're going to have to maneuver this fight. Yeah, I was just going to say that Zoe heal could probably come in before it goes away to heal them up a bit. And they will start with those low members. Jin was able to heal, but Tom pretty low. Here comes Red Team's response. It's a TP. Ash Arrow will hit the Jin, but he gets eaten by the Tom. Exactly That's how you pick we that champion. Hecarim with the re-engage will go in. Zoe's on the tri brush around the corner. She could do a lot of damage. Hecarim going in, getting low, dropping down. That's a double for the Kindred. Jin has... He does have flash, but he's stuck in a bad position in the pit if this he flashes over the wall. This is McMaster's University. How much work can this slash champion do? The Gragas, he's isolated. And you know what? Uh, the triple kill! What on earth? That must have been a double kill on the barrel on his way out. We gotta watch this again. Yeah, let's Try. take a look at that again. Okay, so the one thing I missed was Cho'Gath came around and killed Zoe in the tri brush there. And, and then is able to still double knock up for his team. But we're looking for a Gragas barrel. See these two low members there, one... He's going to walk away, drink his cask, and throw it out before wow. he goes down for the two-piece barrel on his way out, making it so that even when McMasters have a winning play, on his way out, taking two down makes it kind of an even play. But Drake will go over to Mad City. So I think it was kill advantage McMasters, but Drake to Mad City. And, and man, this is just a close game. Damn. Um, so I was going to ask you, is uh, the guy you were talking about, is he that young kid? Yeah, who's like up and coming? Yeah. yeah, I've seen some of his highlight oh, uh, reels as well, and he'll, man, he'll, he'll make you want to just go hit your bag as yeah, hard as you yeah. can, bro. I swear to God, this kid, he, he, he I don't know. I, I can't talk boxing because I haven't watched enough of it, but he'll just make you want to fight someone. So we do have Ocean Drake up in three minutes and twenty seconds. DPs all around. I don't think... Predator. Uh, Predator Cho. Look at him running <laughs> him down. Oh, it's so cool. I love the Omni Zone. I never know when to use it, so I never use it. But Django here, putting it to use. He... In the, in I don't think I've ever used it. Yeah, I, I can't remember a time specifically that I have. It, it's definitely a pretty random rune. But he was able to one-shot the Zoe. I think Zoe might have gone over with an R for some poke. And on her way back, found Cho'Gath with a Q. But wait a second. It's blue team engaging... Onto the red team members. There's no undying here. This no gonna kindred be a ulti. Kill. No zill ulti. It's just a a clean two for two for two kill. If they chase Malkai, they're gonna eat saplings. So they will go ahead and probably call that off. But really nice two v two kill for Mad City. Their bot lane is is just oh, annoying. and the one shot from Gragas here. Can they take down this Cho'Gath? I don't know if they can. Here comes Zillion. This is where they can turn it, but wow, was that a beautiful look by Gragas. That Hecarim ulti will go oh, on to the Zillion, no. who just gets one shot by the Gragas follow-up. And now Django is forced to flash away Mad City, dropping bombs with this Gragas here. Wow, let's take a look at that again, because that Gragas play, oh, it was he barely oh, caught it there, but... Man, that was a one shot if I've ever seen one. Now look and at then... the setup on the Zillion. Watch Zillion. Yeah. He gets feared into death because Gragas is ready. Zillion walking right into him. Bop. There's oh the combo. Oh my god. That is what I'm talking about oh. for some great League of Legends. They are going to get Harold off of that play. Um, and I think as soon as they take that Harold, uh, it's a good chance to reset, make their way towards bot side, try and get some vision and control around the river. We still have a minute and 30, but, uh, you know. No time is better than the present. They That's do have right, TPs right. on Gragas as well as Zoe. So uh, I would say if they go for it, this is a good chance for them to take this Drake. There's no TP on Cho'Gath, uh, but they do have the TP on Zillion. Have, you, have we seen Zoe swap up her spells with I have the not. spellbook yet? I haven't, but I 
my guess is that she has at least. Here's here's even a bigger question. As a spectator through the, the client, That's a are we question. actually going to see the TP change to another summoner when she switches it? Because for all we yes. know, it's switched right now. I want to say yes, but I would think client would, has but... like a mind of its own. It's like yeah. it's like it's like a smart computer that has gained a personality, and it makes you question what you're seeing because <laughs> it is just so inconsistent. But yeah, try. It's all about this Drake uh, up in one minute, and I'd like to point out this Drake is not do or die for either team at all. It's all it's all about the stack yeah. for the soul, right? Oh, and we know it's gonna be an ocean soul. This is really spicy. Both teams want to get there, so it's not worth throwing the game uh, to contest. But I think both teams want enough to where it's gonna go down. So we see Harold drop mid. This is gonna be a tempo play here for Blue, but they have to face check Django, who has pressed the attack. Uh, Kindred Dude. has Zoe Mark. That that could tell us that's the team's target. That Cho'Gath is looking huge right now. Oh, yeah. Chunky boy. We see Maokai will go in. His ulti will get multi-members. Zoe will, or I'm sorry, Kindred will open up on Tom Kench, who's able to walk away. But the pressure back forces the Kindred ultimate. Watch the Gragas here. He will belly slam onto the member on the top side of the fight. It's a messy one. Multiple members dropping. Maokai and Hecarim go down. That's going to be a one for one so far. We have a 4v4 continuing Cho'Gath eating everything. He is a brick wall. You cannot get into the river here. Blue team having to reassess their options and look for a different angle. They yeah. don't have the Hecarim, so they might look to trade away from Drake. There's no... Oh, wait! There's a smite on the Zoe! Watch this. He's going to go over the wall and look for the smite steal. This would be pretty insane. He goes hey, and he gets it! it. The smite steal by Zoe and blue team looking at the And they no longer have Zilly ult or Kindred ult. This is going to go over to Mad City, guaranteed. And on top of it, a wow. double kill. Mark Boots. Mark Boots looking for the triple kill here. Can he get it? Zoning bubble. Oh. You will land, and that might be it for Zilly. Mark Boots. I may here. have been too late on the replay, but I. So we did miss the steal, but we are going to catch the double kill. There's one. He's landing everything. Boom, there's Taking two, and thumbs. he tries to chase down the Zillion here, but does not get him. This this Zoe is crazy. Yeah, Mark right Boots now. now seven and three, looking pretty dominant here on this Zoe. I think he's gonna be putting a lot of damage out after this back. Most definitely, he has a. If I remember here. the oh, I don't have the right keyboard. I was what gonna say if I remembered the hotkeys, I could check the gold, but I don't actually remember what button it is. You have like hawk vision, don't you? How many stacks does that Magi's have? Uh, ten. 10. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty scary. Yes, I do have hawk vision. If nobody knew, I am like a superhero. <laughs> They call me Hawk Lad. Hawk Lad. There's Shut already up, a Hawk, Hawk Man, maybe. I don't know. Shut up, Hawk Man. <laughs> All right, we got a burner here. They this call me Binocular game. Boy. So, for the first time, I think we can talk about a significant mid-game gold lead because the goal was so close last game, but now it's Mad City out with about a 6K lead here <clears throat> on the champions like Gragas, Zoe, and Jin. Just the champions you want. The Hecarim is not is not popping off, but he's curving into the game just fine. We'll get stunned up by the Zillion. I think Kindred is actually going to outscale Hecarim this game. Try a rare, a rare sight. Yeah, Hecarim falling a little bit behind as far as, um, like, pressure goes, I guess, is wh what I'm kind of getting at. Kindred catching up in farm, because Hecarim did have the quite a bit of farm lead early, but now uh, Kindred's starting to catch up. I don't know how many stacks Kindred has right now, but um, I would assume a few. I know he got one off of um a few kills early but to me this looks like it's a tough game for a champion that needs to commit their body alone and Hecarim's dive partner here is going to be Gragas. Gragas yeah. makes really crafty plays uh by himself but Hecarim usually likes to go in with multiple teammates supporting him or some uh I think we're gonna okay the ulti comes down but does he is that enough if that hits okay the uh, belly slam away if it hits he could have maybe gotten a phase rush look for the walk down here uh, basically, but my, my point about Hecarim is it's a really hard comp, in my opinion, for him to fight into. So I think he's actually going to yeah. fall off of a cliff here and just be their smite agent, in, in my opinion. Um, okay. I see that. I see that. It just... Um, does a lot of that difficulty come from the fact that, like, once he gets in, he can't really, like, take down anybody instantly with the ultis yes. and stuff. And now he has nothing. His entire kit revolves off of his E and his ultimate. Yep. And once those are burned, if you don't get a kill, what do you do? 
Yeah, he is like what they they want him to charge in, and Hecarim as a champion usually wants to charge in. So when you can't do what you want to do, it just looks like a tough game, and it is because of the Undying plus CC, and he's just not tanky enough to uh, bear the brunt of, you know, his target being rezzed, and then he'll just die. Uh, he has to play with his team, uh, play where they have control, maybe look to pair up with Gragas and make so big of a smack that there's no response. Um, other than that. If he's smiting neutrals, then he's doing his job. But if he's not, then Zoe might. Good which point. Is hilarious. Which she did. What a clever take there. She got the ulti with a Q burst and the smite taking it away. Um, next Drake is up in a minute and 10 seconds. So now I would like to make the point that if you're McMasters, you don't need to contest this Drake. Um, it's just third for Mad City. So yes, it's point. Uh, which is very scary. Most teams will contest on enemies third, but we see just Zoe will open up the Zoe in oh, range, oh. and Furai will sneak oh, out no. the second. Come on, those shots are too good. We got the American sniper out here. Yeah. Taking that's... down two members. If you didn't notice, let's take a look while they work on this Baron. So watch he curves this this third shot around the zillion red star. That's what game. I was gonna say. On to the I'm gonna wait because I see the members right, of right. McMasters coming in for this Baron. Potentially some action gonna go on here. Uh but yeah, curves that bouncing uh grenade around hits and then gets here the comes red shot. team's response we see zillion helping out chug the kindred is going in for the steal will he get it he's gonna drop the ulti which means baron can't die so the ulti has to go away and then he has to look for a steal but barai will just drop him but chogoth killed oh. the baron. it's it's Django this time this jungler's are not smiting yeah we've got try. steals back and forth coming from other <laughs> People other than the jungler, so let's take a look at that play while they're pushing this down here. Oh, and I bring it up. I'm gonna pick it we'll down. Bubble down the ash, and Gragas with the E flash will follow it up. Will advance onto the next red member. They need to keep these Baron buffs alive, but this Zoe is so lethal. Wow. Here's blue team's response. That's Mad City's response to the Baron steal. Is they will go take that mid tier too. So. Uh, McMaster is actually happy with this trade at the end of the day, but man, this Jin is just clapping people. Jin He's just standing is, here in front of them. Yeah, Jin is strong right now. A force to be reckoned with. We have two members just, I mean, honestly, uh, Mad City right now is just fed. Gonna be hard to deal with. Seven and three Zoe, eight and one Jin, and a seven and five uh, Gragas. Yeah, but you steal Baron, right? So it gives you a bit of time. Drake's off the map now. So look, try both objectives are four minutes 50 plus from being up. So what you need to do is use this four minutes, 50 seconds to try and get a bounty off of one of those members, or you're just, you know, scaling and playing for next objective. But if you can get a bounty or two during this five minute uh, period, the game will, will actually even up. Let's take a look at that play now while we have this quick downtime here. Um, this is the American If you see sniper. this here, I mean, Jin just doing a lot. Um, so I think we see the Zoe damage come out here. Gets the bubble. Now watch this, Jin. Oh, it's too easy. Ah, Maokai was trying to block in. Yes. Oh, man. They were zigzagging each other, uh, unfortunately. But I didn't realize, like, what chunked the ash so hard there was the bouncing grenade of Jin's Q um, going through the members and hitting her for the final one. And the threat of Zoe Jin, there's so much threat coming from a screen away. You can't yes. even see the champions, and yet you're you're under attack. The Ash Arrow will hit Tom, who has cleanse. Blue team looking to answer back with the TP, which is now answered by the Maokai ultimate. Oh, That's this a nice re-engage here. Blue trying to get in. The Gragas will get peeled away. Cho'Gath tries to eat the Gragas, but he can't go in. The Hecarim will go in. Fears a few, but has to run away. Now the Undying spells come in. The Cho'Gath looking to tank in the front lane. He gets rezzed by the Zillion. Undying again. There's no more Undying. Oh Jin is still full HP. Mark Boots getting the Drowsy here. Cho'Gath going to go down. Oh my god, barely. Farai will drop the Ash. They're looking to advance, but Red Team claps back with a couple kills of their own. The Zoe will fall. Oh, oh, the American oh. Sniper will go up with that fourth shot and bang on that Zillion. He will drop. So look how difficult it is to wow. actually fight around this Undying it comp because you have to commit to members, but as you commit, they just res and come back. But... Mad City actually playing this But it doesn't matter at that point because they are They're so far well. ahead. Jin just staying so safely in the back line. D moves up after the fight is almost over, just taking down two more members. Um, and this might be the end. I, we have... No, okay, they're not going to be able to end here, I don't think. 
Ash is respawning. So Ash is coming up, and so this is could be a Maokai. Chase. This could be a chase here because we see Ash. Here arrow comes Ash all missing everybody see. just by a sliver. Yeah, if that Ash arrow hits, there could be a pursuit. And now try we see with that front to back situation, it just oh. looks like the Jin and Zoe put out more damage than the Kindred Zillion Ash, right? There's no backline threat from the comp of McMasters. So they have yep. to fight front to back. They have to rely on how tanky their Cho is, and they have to put out damage with the Kindred and the Ash, but the damage isn't there compared to the Zoe Jin. So you made a good point. They're just too fed, and now the gold. Yeah, let's take like a look AK at this play plus. here as they push in. I mean, how far are they going with this? Before I bring this up, let's give them their chance here. Oh, oh my man. god. Damage. This could be a blue angle in. We see Django going in super deep for the Gragas and will get him to the Zillion. But the Sniper gets the Ash and they trade back the Cho'Gath. Now Hecarim advancing in. Can he get the kill? He will kill Zillion because Zillion ulted Maokai. I don't know why, but I don't think it mattered. I think Red Team is just dead again. And that is going to be the game-winning play. There is no way they are not ending right here. Wow, what a game oh here from Mad City displaying absolute dominance in this game. We have 12 and 1 Jin, 8 and 4 Zoe. Like, these carries on Mad City just absolutely demolished this game. Try the highlights of this game. This is going to be a long one if you're cutting this up later. I feel for <laughs> you because this game is riddled with highlights. We had the Zoe smite steal. We had the Cho'Gath devour steal. But at the end of the day, it was Mad City's team fighting poise. Oh. So that wild. was just too good. You're you're going against Zillion and Kindred Ultimate. You would think if you're not coordinated, you're gonna overcommit on one of these targets and get punished, but they never did. Yeah, that's gonna be game one of week two going over to Mad City. So Mad City.